Board. Brian Webb is here in New York with the details. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Anne Marie. Finding the tail is incredibly important because this is where the black boxes are located and they are the best hope of finding out why the plane went down. Later this week, the system moves here to New York and other parts of the Northeast. On the side of the hill, let me show you what is burning. Mulch, Macy's, Walmart and Target also opened this year on Thanksgiving Day. Bellevue is a designated Ebola treatment center in New York City. Both fires are considered suspicious. Walk with me a little bit. I'll show you where they were. Las Vegas glitz and glamour to the Jersey Shore, but it never turned a profit. I should be under 20 feet of water right now. Instead, this is what is left of Folsom Lake looking more like the surface of the moon. Donald Sterling, there's word the embattled LA Clippers owner plans to give up his stake in the team to his wife. So was there actually a ghost lurking on the other side or is the explanation much more down to earth? Flames and thick black smoke engulfed two brownstone buildings after an explosion and partial collapse Thursday afternoon in downtown Manhattan. The explosion happened in a five-story building that housed a sushi restaurant on the first floor and apartments on the other floors. Patrick Nersessian was five blocks away walking his dog when the explosion tore through the building just after 3.15 p.m. I, I just heard this incredible, like, sonic explosion. I mean, it was like you could feel it. It was like reverberating. Peter Mancini has lived in the building since August. I was uh, up at school and I walked past the TV and, you know, I saw my building engulfed in flames. The city's building department says a private construction crew was working on a gas line in the basement when the explosion happened. Preliminary evidence suggests a gas-related explosion. That investigation is ongoing. Consolidated Edison has turned off gas service to the area. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. It's, it's, it's like a needle in a haystack. Folsom Lake is so dry, treasure hunters now trek the land where fish used to tread water. I just picked this thing out and decided to knock around and have a little fun. I should be under 20 feet of water right now. Instead, this is what is left of Folsom Lake looking more like the surface of the moon. It's below 20% capacity and 50% where it should be this time of year. The lake hasn't been this low since the late 70s, losing 1,700 acre square feet a day. Drastic measures may be on the horizon for the half million people who drink, bathe, and water lawns from the lake's supply. Our board will be considering a plan for implementing significant rationing if we don't get rain. In the town of Folsom, mandatory 20% restrictions are now in place. Residents forced to let green grass go brown and water house plants very carefully. I'm very concerned just because, you know, it hasn't, I've never gone through that. Try to keep the trees alive, but that's mostly the, the lawn, I think, is probably the biggest consumer of water for my house. Yeah. Water experts say Folsom Lake is on track to reach its lowest levels ever. A lake bed so dry it's picked for hidden treasure with the true treasure of rain still nowhere in sight. Brian Webb, KPIX 5. Two women who call themselves the Revel Twins wore matching t shirts in tribute to the latest casino casualty in Atlantic City. We were here from the beginning, we needed to be here at the end. The nearly $2.5 billion Revel Casino will close Tuesday morning after going into bankruptcy twice since opening a little over two years ago. Revel's Hotel closed Monday. Ronnie Dowling works at the resort but hasn't lost hope. We know that we have to all come together, work out the problems, and uh, get organized and, and move forward. There are more losers. The Showboat Casino Hotel closed Sunday, and Trump Plaza will close later this month. A total of four casinos are shutting down this year, leaving 8,000 people out of work, almost a quarter of the city's casino employees. Revel was the hotel that was supposed to turn everything around. It was designed to bring Las Vegas glitz and glamour to the Jersey Shore, but it never turned a profit. Analysts say Revel alienated gamblers with a mostly smoke-free casino and no initial plan to offer players club benefits. The high rollers didn't want to come here. They stayed wherever they were. The Revel sign came down Monday. There's no sure bet on what's next for the building or the city. Brian Webb for CBS News, Atlantic City, New Jersey.
There are no cows in San Francisco's Bernal Heights neighborhood, so somebody took to tipping cars. And I said, well, we should put it back. He goes, don't put it back because the owner won't know what happened. And I was like, I am the owner. Four cars were flipped overnight within 10 blocks of each other, all of them eco-friendly smart cars. Two on their sides, one on the roof, and one resting on its bumper facing straight up into the sky. Confusing a compass, creating a local tourist attraction, and ending this rabbit's foot run of good luck. And one witness says he saw the pack of hooded hoodlums in action. I thought they looked like they were up to no good. And then sure enough, they walk up to this smart car right here, uh, all huddle around it, and then just lift it up and set it on its hind legs. These smart cars can weigh as little as 1,600 pounds, less than half of your average car. And for a few guys to tip one over, no big deal. This YouTube video shows a group of guys flipping a smart car with ease. Shelly isn't actually the car owner. She was watching it for a friend after her father died. We spoke to her by phone. What these people don't realize is that, you know, they're adding to the stress of losing, you know, a parent. So even if all this started as a prank with small cars replacing sleeping cows, no one around here is laughing. And since now it's considered a crime, it really wasn't that smart either. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. More than a million tourists visit Alcatraz every year. A lucky few claim they see something extra special, a ghost. I did not see any ghosts. I've heard rumor of ghosts. I did not see any. A British couple snapped this eerie photo of what looks like a ghostly turn-of-the-century woman staring straight at the camera. The couple completely believes it was a spirit. Other tourists say, well, maybe. Well, possibly. <laughs> I don't know of how many 1,900 women were on Alcatraz, but, you know, I don't know. That picture was taken in the old visitation area of the prison. Criminals on one side, their visitors on the other, separated by thick, bulletproof glass. So was there actually a ghost lurking on the other side, or is the explanation much more down to earth? What do you think it is? Shadows. <laughs> Shadows. We caught up to former Alcatraz prison guard George D. Vincenzi for the inside scoop. He worked on the rock for eight years during the late 1950s. In your experience, were there ever any ghosts out there? No. Nothing? Well, personally, I don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> but that's such a great place for a ghost story. Yes, I imagine. In its 29 years as a federal prison, there were eight murders on Alcatraz, zero executions, and nobody was buried there. But still, the island's history is rich with ghost stories. It's possible. But how do we know for sure? <laughs> and that's the thing about ghosts. What you can prove is less important than what you believe. Brian Webb, KPIX5. Developing news out of Santa Barbara, where police say a drive-by shooter went on a rampage near the UC Santa Barbara campus. Seven people are dead. Last night in the area of Isla Vista neighborhood was sprayed with bullets. It's an area known for numerous student parties. The sheriff believes the suspect was acting alone. He is among the dead and another seven people are hurt. Authorities still trying to establish a motive. Witnesses describe the scene as chaotic and it came out of nowhere. I think I think one girl was shot dead. It, the other girl is was shot as well, but I think she's at the hospital. Uh, first time I saw it, I just ran away from my life, so I don't know any details. Police say the suspected shooter exchanged gunfire with deputies before crashing into a parked car. It's not clear whether he was hit by the gunfire or died from self-inflicted wound. One of the main defendants in the corruption scandal involving state Senator Leland Yee is getting an unusual show of support. KPIX 5's Kristen Ayers shows us a fundraiser to free the man known as Shrimp Boy. Chow is still in federal custody. His attorneys say they'll be asking for a bail hearing in the next few weeks. He died more than a year ago, but were left at the county morgue. As Stacy Butler reports, those vets should have been buried, but instead were forgotten. The L.A. County morgue blames the V.A. for the oversight. A V.A. spokesperson says the morgue never contacted them about the issue. A Bay Area man is paying the price for having a popular name. On the Consumer Watch, Julie Watt shows us how a case of mistaken identity led to some major tax trouble. Smith has had some other troubling times with his name. He's had wages garnished for someone else's back child support, and he was arrested and put in the back of a cop car until police pulled a mugshot proving his innocence. 
If you have a consumer problem, go to KPIX.com and send us an email. An ex-Oakland cop is under investigation. He's been collecting thousands of dollars in disability. At the same time, he's been performing dangerous and physically demanding work for the FBI. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver says he has the support of the required three-fourths team owners to force Sterling to sell. The people who can afford a $10 million yacht in the first place are probably doing all right. Doing all right. You can probably get a second one. Hopefully they salvage the <laughs> champagne. Yeah, that would make it. them feel a little better. <laughs> well, thanks for